my tactic? Learn your tactic. No, wait, gotta play that one. What's five? Five. Here we go. Really? Yeah. Yeah, oh. yeah. All right. This is Marlo. I'm Matthew. Coming straight at you from beautiful Mammoth Springs here. And we are going to reveal, come on Marlo. We're gonna reveal our secret location of the Forest Fen treasure. Never before talked about. We've always kept this one in the vault. Come on, we're gonna do this? Yeah, yeah we're gonna do this. All right, let's go show them where it's at. Northern entrance of Yellowstone. We're in, uh, and if you look over that away, that town is Gardner, Montana. So, one of the cool things about figuring out a poem like this is that all the clues have to daisy chain together. So, my dad uh, had a science project when he was a junior high school kid where he daisy chained a bunch of batteries together with his father to make a plasma cutter. And they got all work and sequence, right? It's a relay. And if one of them is the weak link and it breaks down, then the whole thing fails. And the same thing is true with this poem, which is if they don't all go in sequence, if one clue doesn't follow the other exactly, then you got a weak link and your, and your theory doesn't hold. So Warm Waters Hall, where is that? It's here. And the reason it's here is because just south of here, there's the Boiling River. If you get a chance, you should go and you, should, you can swim in there. It's right. It's closed down right now. Seasonally, they're doing some road repairs or something. So if you do have a chance, comment. Let me know how it went because I'd love to get back there sometime. So the warm waters actually flow northbound, which was tough to find a clue where the, north, the waters flew, flowed to the next place where they halt in a, in a location near a canyon. So in this case, the place where the Boiling River connects to the Gardner, to Gardner uh, in, into the Yellowstone is adjacent to a canyon. So what we're gonna do next is kind of take you down to the next clue, the canyon, and show you how it follows up to the Meek and the Home of Brown and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, but this, where it all begins. So, all right. All right, begin at where we're warm waters halt and take it in the canyon down. So we're leaving Gardner right now, and this is obviously far to get where we're gonna put in at the home of Brown. It's not far, but it's too far to walk, right? So we're driving it. Now, this whole canyon, uh, you can see flanked by the mountains here. There's a, there's a portion of the poem where he says that it's no place for the meek. And if I'm remembering my Forest Fen history right, because it's been a little while since I was deep, deep down the rabbit hole. But back in the 1980s, there was a cult that moved into town headed by Elizabeth Clare Prophet. And it was a doomsday cult. She predicted the end of the world. There was going to be nuclear fallout. And these people started stockpiling massive amounts of guns. They were bringing in huge uh, bunker material. They spent two years building these massive underground bunkers. And if you are Forrest Fenn and you're an avid naturalist and, you know, modern day Indiana Jones, and a cult moves in and all starts turning this into uh, a modern apocalypse epicenter then you're not going to be a big fan of this area. Uh, and neither were the people of Gardner. So my belief is the Grand Teton Ranch, where the Church Universal and Triumphant was headquartered, was right up on the banks, uh, not too far from the river that we're passing by right now. We'll see if we can get a shot of it up here. The, the church is not as thriving as it once was. But I believe that the clue where it says that it's no place for the meek was written back, was uh, inspired by that church and saying that this land, this Paradise Valley that we're heading into here, 
is not a place for that kind of nonsense, according to Forrest Fenn's opinion. Um, so, in the canyon, headed to kind of the next clue, which is... Um, take a look at that one after we get to the ranch here all right so we started here at the Gardner River there you can see in the corner the boiling river uh, that flowed up to the Yellowstone we just took you down the Yankee Jim Canyon so it was 12 miles it'd be a three hour and 45 minute walk so it's too far to walk and we're not yet to the home of Brown but before we get there I wanted to show you a couple of things. So this area here, Yellowstone Trail, if you look down in the distance there, you see that yellow rooftop there? So look back, I mean, this is right about Yate, okay? So this is what we're talking about with the home of, this is the Meek. So if you come over this way, see that sign right over there for the Royal Teton Ranch and that was ultimately the spot for the Church Universal and Triumphant so I believe that there's still a remnant of the followers that are left apparently the nuclear fallout didn't happen or it did and we're living in a simulation I'd have to ask them I haven't been to one of their services recently um, but that location no place for the meek is like right across the river from the home of Brown. And the interesting thing about that site as well is if you look at the poem here, it says, from there there's no place for the meek. We made what, it, the end is ever drawing nigh. So the interesting thing about that is Forrest Fenn, as somebody who was an accomplished like horse rider from his youth, the nigh side of a horse is the left side, right? So if we're on this river right here and we're going down it, and we want to figure out what side the treasure is on, imagine that you're taking this journey from inside a raft, or you're a fly fisherman, or you're in a boat, like a fishing boat, and he's talking about put-ins, and he's talking about the nigh side. He's the, the, the treasure would be on the left side of this, if that's the nigh side of the river. So the meek is on the nigh side or the left side, as is uh, the next clue is, is not on the nigh side. Um, but he talks about heavy loads and water high. So wherever we're going, for these clues to all match, we would have to have difficulty getting up our, our, our creek to our destinations. There'd have to be uh, no paddling up the creek after we get to where we're going on the next clue. So let's take you over to the home of Brown here and we'll show you how that all connects the dots. Straight up ahead is Dome Mountain and when I got here the first time, I drove 22 hours to get here with my buddy Ryan Roish. What's up, Ryan, if you're watching? And Bradley Seidenfeld, and he shot the video for the first time and all the stills that we collected. I'll put some of those in there so you can see. But we spent all our time hunting on top of that mountain over there. Marley, you want to show them up top of that mountain? Like a bird too. Yeah, so right now it's super hazy because there's all these fires in California and Oregon and Washington, and it's really kind of a bummer to have seen this pristine valley and clear blue skies in just immaculate condition, and to, to come back and see it all hazy like this is kind of a bummer. We couldn't, there was, they couldn't even ride horses uh, where we stayed last night because the horses are suffering so bad from breathing in all the smoke. So. But anyways, yeah, that mountain is a bear, quite literally. You had to bring a bear spray up on top of it to get there. But the clues seemed to kind of line up as I continued to go up there. And so I was really, really expecting the treasure to be up there, and I couldn't. And as you all know, who've gone out and hunted for this before, everything's way bigger than on Google Maps. <laughs> when you actually get out here to try to find this stuff and you're combing through massive areas and don't even get me into blazes. How many blazes have you all tried? I mean, cairns, sticks crossing, carving FFs into trees, whatever it may be, everything looks like a blaze when there's $2 million supposedly uh, underneath it somewhere, right? So, but this next location though, where we came, 
and we're pulling up on it here, is the Joe Brown put-in. So right along this river, again, taking the fisherman's perspective, you're coming up this river, uh, you're you're ready to, to go ahead and, oh, in fact, we might just be, that's slip and slide. So that's one uh, place that you can put in along the Yellowstone River for some fishing. The next location is the Joe Brown put-in. So there were some questions about what a put-in was. And this is a quite literal put-in. You can either take your boat out, you can put it in, right? And there used to be an old timer who lived up here who made his home here. And hence the name Joe Brown put-in. It was literally the home of Brown. So I'm gonna show you it. So now. You can see here, this is the Yankee Jim River access, but it's actually the Joe Joe Brown put in, right? So as you can see over here, we've got some people who are putting in the river as we speak. Now I could have sworn there's a clue in here that says, let me see where it says here. Ah, your effort will be worth the, the cold, right? So one of my theories was, was that you had to be out here when it was cold, when it was, the water was lower, you know, the, the runoff from the mountains were and the, and the river had shrunk because somehow then you would be able to find the blaze. Now I could have sworn Maybe I was wrong. I came back here on a trip and it was sunset. So I, it was barely, it was lower than this by probably about an, an hour later, barely any light left. And I came down here and I was looking at these rocks here. And I could have sworn I saw an arrow that somebody had made that was pointing to the nice side of the river. Now was it? I don't know. I don't know. But I could have sworn that it was, right? But I was out of sunlight and I was only driving through so I didn't have any chance to uh, explore it any further. But up there, if you go across the road, you're gonna find that there's a trailhead over there. And there's a picture of me kind of climbing up there on a solo trek, going up that mountain, looking for the gold on the top of that mountain. And the interesting thing about that picture is that it's all in black and white, right? Brad, my buddy Brad did a great job of shooting it, but it's all in black and white. And it's all me solo, very ominous. You got Paradise Valley over here. You got me kind of solo trekking it up there. And I remember looking at that picture and thinking that it was kind of a metaphor for much of the first half of my life. Very much a solo, kind of adventure also very dark black and white not a lot of color to it perilous if you will and I remember thinking that even though it was an awesome picture that the best journeys in life are not the ones that you take by yourself the best journeys in life are the ones that you take with other people and that's what brings color to them that's why they're not black and white and one of the things that's really been cool about this Forest Venture, uh, Forest Fen adventure, is that he kind of made me fall in love with Montana. I would never have probably come here if I wasn't searching for the gold. And if I hadn't have ever come here, I probably wouldn't have brought Marlo with me. <laughs> Watch out for that rock. Um, and that's the real treasure, right? The whole point of this thing is that the treasure is the journey. It's the adventure 
It's doing it with other people. It's being out and, and appreciating the beauty that's around here. And that's why even though the treasure has been found, I wanted to come back here again and share it with Marlo. And we have had, yeah, that's right, thumbs up. And we have had an awesome trip and we're not done. We still gotta go up, <laughs> right? We still gotta go up and check out some glaciers before they melt which is unfortunate. We've got to do whatever we can to preserve this so that our kids can continue to enjoy it the same way we did. So that it's not always covered in smoke so that the glaciers, you know, are not all gone and the wildlife is not all gone. So I guess that's kind of the takeaway here. Get out there, enjoy it, do your best to preserve it. And uh, thanks for us for the adventure. Even though I didn't get the 2 million, I got a lot more than that out of it. So cheers to all of you who did it as well. You found the treasure, all right.